I'm so bored. I could play a video game or read some books and do homework, but I just don't want to. But I'm so bored. What can I do? Who the heck are you? No time to explain. Here! Catch! Wait, what are you? Sorry, past Mr. Me. It's for the greater good. I promise. What's up, guys? It's Arisai Xerxes from the future. I've come back in time because the world has gone crazy. I mean, toast is flying everywhere, people are sheltered in their homes. It's madness! But, I knew this time would be safe. What we need now is games. More than ever. That's why. I've compiled a perfect list of online gaming websites for people to play while they're inside their homes so they don't have to leave and start the Toast Wars. <sighs> Alright guys, I don't have much time, so let's get this started. Alright, first up is Cool Math Games. Now. This gaming site offers lots of educationally based games, like logic games, puzzle games, heck, it even has jigsaw puzzles. Who doesn't love jigsaw puzzles? Not to mention, it's completely free. You can join for subscriptions and pay a flat rate every now and again, but you really don't have to. It's only if you want to support the site and the content that it creates, because they're always putting out new games, and the games are really fun. A lot of the older games would run on Adobe Flash, which, as you all know, is going away on Google Chrome and a lot of other browsers in 2020, but the website has assured people that they've converted a lot of the older titles into HTML5 format, and all of their newer games are running on the HTML5 format, so there's going to be no issue for anyone who wants to continue playing the games they love. One of the things I really like about this site is even though it runs pop-up ads, they never appear in places where you would accidentally be likely to click on them. And that's really good for younger players. Because, you know, kids will click around on websites because it's flashy and fun. And even adults can sometimes misclick on things. So it's really nice to know that the website runs AdSense, but doesn't expect it to pay for their entire revenue. Another thing I like about the website is that the games can take anywhere from a few hours to play to as long as you want. Some of the most popular franchises on the website are the Papa's Games. These games simulate running your own restaurant and they have a freezeria, a pizzeria, donutaria. I'm pretty sure by now they'll even have like a popcorneria because you know, who doesn't want to make popcorn with like cheese and cupcakes on it? And these games go on for forever. There's a leveling system that introduces new ingredients and items every time you play. You get customers of a wide variety, and you get tips, just like you would in a real restaurant. Except without all the rude customers. Win-win in my book. They also have a lot of more black and white titles. Some of the newer games I've found use a lot of older styles, kind of like Undertale. But different from Undertale in that every choice you make doesn't change the canon of the games, so don't worry, you're perfectly fine and your computer will not attack you. Even their more educational games aren't really as educationally based as you would think. A lot of it is more geared toward puzzle solving and basic logic. They can have components like basic math equations, but I've never really found those to be a detriment to the fun of the game. Heck. I come for the fun characters, the colorful gameplay, and they support small indie creators. What could be better? Next on the list is a uh, oldie but a goodie. Fun Brain. Now I know what you're thinking. Fun Brain is for little itty bitty kids. So? A good game is generally made for everyone to play. It doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you're having fun. 
have fun. Now these games are primarily based on teaching young children basic math, basic learning skills, and these games are also focused on getting kids' reflexes to be honed perfectly. A website dedicated to making potential future gamers? Now that's what I call cool. A lot of these games are really simple and have basic outlined premises somewhere on the page, either below or above, and they generally want you to match colors, match shapes, jump to the end of the thing. One of my favorite games on there is the Turtle Wax game. It's where you take like a little turtle on a slide and you just like move the slide up and down to get him onto the target and he goes wee. It's just so much fun. They also offer a wide variety of educational videos, books to read, so it's really great if you have like really itty bitty small children, but a lot of the stories in there are really super creative. I won't talk about any of them because nobody likes spoilers, but I would recommend and give it a try. You might just be surprised. Unlike cool math games, Funbrain doesn't offer subscriptions. One of the things that I like about Funbrain is how easily navigable it is. You can clearly see everything on the screen, you're not likely to click on any of the ads, just like with cool math. But what Funbrain does differently is that these ads are mostly more geared toward education, I would find, whereas on cool math, they can be just about anything. And that's definitely a really good thing, especially for younger people would be more likely to click on things. One of the things I like about Funbrain is that they categorize their games by age and grade, so that way it gives kids the opportunity to challenge themselves with games of a higher level if they're bored on another one. It's a really neat trick in order to get kids to feel like, hey, I'm playing grown-up games. I'm feeling really smart and intelligent, and it just boosts kids' confidence overall. It could be better than that. Also, the characters are really creative. They're colorful, unique, and fun. I've never seen a gaming website that had colorful characters of so unique a variety like Fun Brain has, except maybe Pop Tropica. I wonder how that website's doing. Hmm. The next entry on the list is one that many people will probably recognize. Neopets! Who doesn't like Neopets? They're little fun creatures that you can take care of online. They come in a wide variety of creatures from like dragons to griffin-like creatures, snake-like creatures, and you can create them yourself or you can adopt them from other players. It's a really unique function. Not to mention, you can take care of your Neopets by feeding them, watering them, giving them their own pets to take care of and interact with. They can go on vacations, they'll send you letters after those vacations, you can buy them outfits and dress them up, and generally just have a good time taking care of a pet without a lot of the responsibilities that a real pet brings. It's a really good way to teach kids what they would be in for for a real life pet in a fun and safe environment. New Pets is completely free to play, but there is in-game currency. You can get this in-game currency whenever you start in the game, or you can use real-life money to exchange for the Neo currency. There's also another currency in the game that can't be exchanged for real money called Neo Points. And the way you get Neo Points is by playing mini games with your pet, purchasing items with your pet, and generally just doing everything the game asks of you on a day-to-day -day basis. The pets will live in their own home and you can decorate it and just make it their own little space. It's a really, really nice touch, because they don't have to go that far for a simulated pet, but they do, and it shows that they really care about the people who play these games. It's typically a children's game, but a lot of adult players are just playing it because they remember playing it fondly as a kid, and you know a game has to be good if it's bringing back players years after they first played the game. One of the things I liked the most about Neopets was the fact that I could name my own pet. It didn't really restrict me in any way except, you know, the obvious ones, no bad language, no stealing another player's name, personal information that would identify somebody, the basics. But one thing I noticed that might be a bit off-putting about the naming system is if you adopt a pet from someone else, you can't change their name whatsoever. You're just kind of stuck with the name that the original pet gave. 
it's a nice touch and kind of shows that this pet was someone else's, so you should take really good care of it. But I know some players might prefer a different name for that new pet. Just a little small tidbit if you want to get into it. Now I should be transparent and let everyone know that I didn't play Neopets myself. My best friend did and recommended it to me, and even gave me most of the information that I'm using for this video. So, thanks Sam, you're a real pal. And it's one of the reasons why I even included it in the video itself was because of her raving recommendations and just the plethora of information she was able to give to me. I figured, if she loves it so much, why not share this love and get other people to enjoy a game that genuinely seems like it's trying to help people and have fun at the same time? I can assure you, the next gaming website I'm going to talk about, I have played extensively and I've had tons of fun, so that's one of the reasons I'm recommending it now to you guys. It's Pokemon Showdown. Now, it's an online Pokemon battle simulator. They have every generation, every iteration of battle that you could possibly hope for and wish, and you can battle random people online. Or you can find players that you know, such as your friends, create avatars, and battle using whatever rules and style you want. One of the things I like about the Pokemon Showdown website is that even with an old computer like mine that doesn't really want to run most of anything, the games still run pretty smoothly. It doesn't require a lot of signing into things, it doesn't require a subscription, it just requires you to have the URL, log in, have fun! You can even watch other people battle and learn strategy from them. And even if you don't want to battle, there's a lobby where people can just chill and hang out and chat with other folks. It's a really nice place to go if you're really bored and have nothing else to do. Not to mention, it's always fun to see people interacting and just enjoying a franchise. Another thing I really like about this game is the fact that the ads are in easy to see places so you don't accidentally click on them. Much like with Fun Brain or Cool Math. A lot of the ads are pretty random, so I don't think they're more geared toward getting kids to click on them, but it's just a thing to be careful of. The website even offers the ability to replay matches that you yourself have had, or to replay matches that other people have had from the beginning, or from the last turn that they've taken. It's a really fun feature, because people who come into battles late aren't going to be lost, and can even enjoy and determine, or guess, I would say, how the battle will end, even if it hasn't yet. The battling system itself is relatively simple. You have a team of six, like you would in any regular Pokemon game. You get to toss them out, and you can see their stats, you can see their moves, but you can't see your opponent's stats or moves, just like in a regular Pokemon game. You can switch in and out at any time, unless you are prevented by a Pokemon's move or by a rule set. The game also features completely 3D sprites that move on their own, show the attack animations. It's a really nice touch, especially for an online gaming website that... It just feels nice. The only thing I can say is that I don't think that they've updated to include the Nintendo Switch titles as of yet, but if they have, Please let me know down below in the comments, because I haven't played the game in about a month now, and I would really like to get back into it. Well, I think that's all the time that I have. It's been really nice coming back and seeing everything, knowing everything isn't a giant bread. I think my house is brioche now, cream cheese falling out the top. Toast apocalypse is weird. You really don't want to be in it. And that's why, please stay inside. Please stay safe. Do the best you can, guys. We're gonna make it through this. I know it. Until next time, y'all. Erisai Xerxes, signing out. Let's get you up from there, past to me. <laughs> Head. What happened? I could have sworn I saw another me, but I must have been dreaming. What's that?
video game reviews, huh? That's not a half bad idea.